Good morning and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. We thank you for reviewing our service here today. During these difficult times, we pray that you take God's love and mercy to heart and know that he is always with you. I have a few announcements this morning before we begin. If you, any of you have a need, uh, of the members out there have a need of any kind, please feel free to call the office and leave a message if I'm not there. And if I am there, I'll be uh, answering your message then right away. And also, too, at these services, obviously, we're not taking offerings, but we do ask that you continue to send in your tithes and your offerings into the church office uh, at our mailing address. Thank you very much. So with that, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. We now make confession of our sins and receive forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you are to keep watch over sin, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you there is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that you, we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. My friends in Christ, receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, our one and only Savior, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace to you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with all of you. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from all sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of our spirit, and that we may have be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear from the word of God, from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 6. For to set the mind on, fle on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness, his righteousness given to you. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to you, to your mortal bodies, through his spirit who dwells in you. Amen. And from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 32nd verse, Glory to you, O Lord. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed. And those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what, was hap what had happened to him, saying, See, we are going to, up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And in three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us, for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? 
And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and the other on your left, in glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? But to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those who, have, who it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would grant be great among you must first be you must first be their servant. And whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we are here at the fifth Sunday in Lent, historically known as Judica, which means judge me. Yes, this season of Lent does turn our attention to judgment, especially God's judgment against his own son instead of against the world. But what does our world today think of judgment? And who in his right or her right minds would invite judgment? Well, maybe the answer can be found in the identity of the one that is calling out for judgment. Some are able to drink that cup and some are not. And Jesus knows very well his identity. The disciples, though, mistake theirs. Fortunately, in the dialogue that results, the identity of Jesus exposes our mistaken identities, but also restores us in the identity of our Savior. Jesus knows very well his own identity. In verses 32 through 34 of our text, he says this. He knows that he is going up to Jerusalem. Now, we have positive impressions of that phrase going up. And we might think of, of rising to a place of prominence, just like King David once did in the very same city that Jesus is now going to. However, King David did it by blood and the risk of others. And here in our reading, we see the seed of David, Jesus Christ, going up to Jerusalem in order to suffer and to die for the sake of his people. Jesus knows he's taken this path of humility. And while he is going up physically to Jerusalem, he is going down the path to suffering and death, both physically and spiritually, as he describes in very clear language to his disciples and to us. Consider then the relationship between the upwardly mobile and the downtrodden. From a fallen human standpoint, we cannot make ourselves higher except by making others lower and putting them under us. Fallen human society has in its mind the, that life consists of ruling over others. Now that is the father of lies that is talking, that no good low life, Satan himself, that is talking to us there. Jesus demonstrates to us what dominion really means by submitting himself to the support and restoration of life in this world. Jesus knows that the resurrection is also a final piece of what is to come. The gospel begins and ends with God's gracious gift. His gift of, the, of life in his incarnate son, Jesus Christ, and the restoration of life is given to us. The disciples, James and John, badly mistake their identities. In this case, there is no genuine glory for them, for, for them since they are acting selfishly. The question is, 
Do they really want to drink Jesus' cup and, his, and receive his baptism? Cup in the Bible has to do with what one's life is full of, and of also of baptism, which means to be washed. Life with God requires perfect obedience of his law and absolute condemnation for our sins and our failures. They don't really want to drink that cup. They have mistaken their identities. And the other 10 disciples are just as mistaken about their identities. Are we making that same mistake as well? Are you ever angry over the selfish behavior of others while unaware of the mistake that you're making as well? Truth be told, we all make these mistakes. And the 12 take their lead from the world rather than from, from Jesus. Our human nature, our fallen human nature, cannot be separated from the selfish orientation that is inherited from Adam. But Jesus' identity restores us to our identity in him. And this is consistent with his love for his disciples and us, since that love begs for patience in order to reach its goal. And Jesus is very, very patient. Our human nature cannot be separated, no. But Jesus' word to the twelve and to us shows the love that, he all, that always is his identity. And he simply cannot tear, we can, simply cannot tear our material possessions away from the material world that appeals to us. But the power of God's word and his grace demonstrated here in Jesus is fully capable of regenerating our souls setting a very different force to work in our lives. Jesus inverts the pyramid, teaching us that real authority and real power is demonstrated by putting oneself at the bottom of the heap and serving others and loving each other. We show the world that we are Christians by our love, as the song says. And this is so much, uh, so much of a need here in our current days and in, in, in these days to come, considering everything that's going on in the world right now. Therefore, Jesus provides the absolute foundation for identity and thus for life. The Son of God came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, as verse 45 of our text says. And it is in Christ's identity that we have been baptized, and that gives us identity. In our baptism, we are in Christ, and his identity has become our identity. Our new identity as Christians, inviting judgment so that we may honestly repent of our mistakes, inviting the judgment of God that declares under the New Testament, as Jeremiah declares, for I will forgive their iniquity. Jeremiah 31, verse 34. Jesus Christ took the judgment that we had coming to our us upon himself. And because of that, we are forgiven and we belong to God. Amen? Amen. Being in Christ is light. And it is his identity that makes us, and that's you and me, a people who will seek to serve others from the abundance that God gives to each and every one of us, rather than trying so hard in our lives to get what we don't have from others. Amen. And the peace of Christ, which, which precedes all, all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
For me and for my salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For my sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of all sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the church. Gracious Heavenly Father, creator and preserver of all things, we come before your throne of grace on behalf of our families and friends, ourselves, and all in the world who feel the fear of contracting a new disease that is spreading so quickly. Strengthen our bodies and spirits that we might be spared the sickness. Give wisdom and knowledge to the doctors and the nurses and all who provide care for the sick and the suffering, as well as to our world leaders who bear responsibility for their citizens. By your will, heal those who are suffering from infection and bring the spread of this virus to a swift end. Through all days of trial, remind us of your great love and the forgiveness and salvation earned for us by your Son, Jesus Christ, our one and only Savior. And in his name, we pray this. And we also add to our prayers these petitions today. Lord, continue to send the life-giving rains everywhere it's needed, especially in this area, Lord. And we always pray as everything by your will and not our will be done. The world, this, this ground is parched, Lord. Just send the life-giving rains so that the crops can come up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our members and friends and neighbors in, in public and minis, military service. Gracious Heavenly Father, be with our first, our first, de, uh, our first defenders and, and those who defend us overseas and who are at war. Comfort them with your presence. Keep them safe, Lord, and bring them home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also remember in our prayers all of our members and friends who are in nursing homes and hospitals. Gracious Lord, be with all those people. You know who they are. Bring them your healing hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up our homebound members. Gracious Heavenly Father, you know who our homebound members are. Please comfort and be with them this time. Sometimes they get lonely and they just need to feel your presence and your love and your grace and your mercy. And if there is healing needed, bring them your healing hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we also pray for all of our members and friends who are ill or injured. Just be with them, Lord. Bring them healing. Bring them your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift this up to your throne of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our one and only Savior, who taught us to pray that perfect prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. We leave now to serve him who first served us. And all of God's people say, Amen. See you next Sunday.